Twas the afternoon of Boxing Day, and all through the workshop not a creature was stirring, with the obvious exception of that tosspot from Hull, who'd come in to the workshop because he just learnt a hack on how to save his batteries that he was going to throw away because they were dead. Right, I've got two dead batteries. That one's a live one. There are a set of lights that come on. This one has none. This one has none. And when you put it to the charger, it doesn't register as doing anything at all. As indeed. But the one that is good, the red light comes on, so it's charging. Now, I found a nice little uh, hack, I think you're supposed to call them nowadays, where you can use one battery to just kickstart the other two, and it should then, the charger should recognise those batteries. So, on the top of each one, these slots, one has B plus, B minus, B plus, B minus, B plus, B minus. Now, I've not done this, so the odds are it'll go wrong. But the thing is, you take ordinary bit of wire, strip to the ends, insert it into B plus, slot, There's little grippers on there, and then that goes into B plus, and then guess what, you take B minus, and then that goes into B minus. And apparently, all you do, leave it in there for a couple of seconds. Let's see if that does it. Put it into the charger. And now it recognizes it. So that's excellent. Take that out. See if we can do it with the other one. Live, right in front of your hot and stinky eyes. I was going to chuck these batteries away, both of these, because I thought they were duff, dead, gone. But they're not. Fantastic. So that works a treat. I was going to throw... not that one. Yes, that one. <laughs> these two batteries. I was going to throw these away because they weren't working. Uh, so a little thing how to jump start them. Uh, and it's something to do with the, the amount of voltage just goes below what the charger can recognise. I have not a clue. The only other thing, <coughs> you might be wondering why I'm wearing a Christmas, a Christmas hat. It's a Father Christmas hat. Uh, it's because it's, today is Christmas Day. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing Father Christmas for all of December now. And it's been really great. I've really enjoyed it. And I've been having to read the story. So, <laughs> my version of the story. Let's go in. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the workshop, not a creature was stirring, except obviously for that toss pot from Hull. The MIG welder was hung by the Series 3 with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. And he, he was, because he was the one who, who owned the Series 3, and he was the only one stupid enough to be in on Christmas Eve to do welding. <sighs> Before I tuck into this delish mince pie, that uh, Dave has left me. Um, I'm going to have to point out that uh, when I was a schoolboy, I was riding home one day when an oh so very clever young man who wore a biker's jacket, even despite the fact that he rode a bicycle, he decided to show off by cutting in front of me very quickly. And he did and knocked me off and I bit the road, as a result of which my teeth went through my lip and broke. And ever since then I've had a crown on this tooth. This one was dead, the root got snapped, so it now has a veneer on. Um, years later it was knocked out twice by a quarter staff. 
and my dentist said, if we have to put a bigger post in, then we're going to just have to end up with a wing nut out the top of your head. Dentist comedy. And it did fall out <laughs> while I was driving. So I glued it back in while I was driving. Don't listen. Don't listen. With super glue, which I later found out dissolves bone. It's great for gluing up cuts, like it was invented for in Vietnam, but it dissolves bone. So don't do that, because you just make it worse, like I had. So I uh, went to the Evesham Dental Health team, who are great, and I, I, they put it in. But currently, I'm having the, the new post put in, and the bone has to settle. So I only have a temporary tooth put in. And I was doing my ho-ho-ho routine to some small people when I felt my temporary, not the permanent, this is the temporary crown, so it's got a temporary cement holding it in place, it gave way. And my tooth flew out and landed on the carpet in front of some small child. So I then had to scurry around on the floor as Father Christmas with the beard on, trying to re <laughs> retrieve my tooth before A, anybody knew what was going on, and B, it got stood on or eaten by a child. So I picked it up, put it in a bowl beside me. So the last few months, few, well, the last few weeks, have uh, been me to being Father Christmas with my front tooth out. Now I'm doing a show for you with my front tooth out and I'm about to risk life and limb by eating a mince pie with a tooth that comes out. I've developed special biting techniques. I find very often <coughs> the tooth will sort of become glued to the food, and those are the more frequent times that it becomes dislodged. So <laughs> I have this technique now where I bite and make sure that the food is separated from my tooth before I take my teeth apart, separate it with my tongue. I'll have a go. I'll, I'll try to show you. <laughs> I'll try to show you. I didn't do it that time. I was reckless. But anyway, now you know. <clears throat> it's going very well. Gary Owen. Now, uh, uh, yes, before you get concerned about me putting pop. Today's programme is brought to you by Lemsip. Other products are available. You get cross with me putting hot Lemsip on the wing of Series 1. Today's placemat is a grinding disc. And happy Christmas just gone. It's just me in a workshop with a loose tooth and a... Oh, Christ. So that now is now my three batteries saved. I can I, I'll, I'll charge this one. Ho ho ho.